Now in this one, we're going to be talking about purpose. We're going to be talking about your calling, that gift inside of you, that thing that God wants you to develop in your life. And now for a lot of us, we have all given up our gifts. We have all given up our purposes and we all have a purpose that was designed, a path that is unique for us. But all of us have given it up because we idolize certain things in life, whether it's money, whether it's attention, validation, whatever it may be. We idolize certain things outside of us to where we don't see the uniqueness, we don't see the power, we don't see how our gift can really do us any good or benefit our lives in any way because if you're just making necklaces and making beaded wristbands and your mind starts wandering into money and you're like, okay, well, I'm working this job. Like, what are these necklaces? What is the, like, what are these wristbands going to do that I'm creating? Like, this just doesn't even make sense. But you got to understand when it comes to your calling, when it comes to the thing God has designed you to do. There's a blueprint and there's step-by-step -step actions that you have to take. It's like if you start out painting, you feel like your calling is painting. You're not just going to start out at Picasso's level and make millions and millions of dollars. You have to put money aside. You have to put the things you idolize to the side and really just focus on it because you truly enjoy it and it feels natural to you. Like when it comes to these videos, I have been doing this since I was a kid. I gave it up because I wasn't making making any money, I went into another path, so I completely dug this into the sand like it didn't exist, and I stopped growing in this endeavor, and I just put it to the side, and I went off into another path, and idolized money to where I was miserable, and obviously, we all need money, but when it comes to your purpose, when it comes to your calling, when it comes to the thing that God has ordained for you, it's a step-by-step -step process, you're not just gonna accumulate all these things right off the get-go, like it could be more so spiritually in that fulfilling factor where it's just your spirit that feels good and that's what it could be. Let's put idols to the side. Let's put our temptations and our desires to the side and now all we're left with is our spirit. What does your spirit want? What is your purpose? What is your calling? And it's usually that thing that you were doing when you were a child and it could seem kind of useless. You know, maybe you were too attached to it and you started to idolize money where it ruined your purpose for you. Like for me, I feel like I ruined making YouTube videos because it became about the views. It became about is there money coming in? Am I getting any return? Like, is this worth my time and energy? And I put the spiritual side aside and just focused on the idols to where it suffocated that purpose. And I didn't want to do it, so I put it to the side and I just got a normal job and I went down that path. And when it comes to your purpose, there's a step by step blueprint that God has designed for you. And we all have different gifts, we all have different talents. Like, for me, it's communication, truly just speaking what's inside of my soul, what's inside side of my heart because first and foremost I know one day I'm just gonna turn to dust so I want to get all this stuff off my chest before I do inevitably leave this earth I want to leave it all behind so it's like a little story I am writing my story as we go and I want to make sure it's in detail I'm telling the truth and I'm speaking my heart because that's what truly translates that's what truly leaves an impact and that's what carries on and that's what's gonna help people in the long run but we all have different gifts and to a lot of people they may look at their gifts like what's the purpose this makes absolutely Absolutely no sense. I am really good at making bracelets. I am really good at making necklaces. Like, how does this translate to society? And you really never know because you haven't developed it. When you have no idols, when you can put money to the side, when you can put views to the side, when you can put all these things to the side and you just do what God has called you to do, you will start to see why you are being developed in certain areas and it will unfold in real time. You don't have all the answers at the beginning. You're doing it because you love it. Okay, clearly it's made for you. You keep walking down that path, keep developing, keep talking to God, and in the end, you will see why he was developing you, molding you, shaping you in certain areas until it amounts into something great that was unexpected. It's a mystery. It's all a mystery. For me, it's like, yes, I love videos, but I'm seeing all these YouTubers like Mr. Beast and all these high-profile individuals doing huge, grand-scale videos, and in my eyes, I'm like, God, like, I gotta do so much more, and God's like, no, just calm down, just work at your pace. You know, I try to do more, and and it just feels uncomfortable sometimes because I feel like I have to stretch myself out to the extremes and become somebody who I'm not and do these videos that I don't even enjoy just to garner some attention. So I'm like, yeah, this is kind of distorting the view. Like, I'm just going to go at God's 
speed. And that's what you got to do. You got to do what you truly enjoy, what resonates with you. And it's a step-by-step -step process. You will grow day by day. You don't need to jump into it. Let's say, for example, you're painting and you love painting. Now, my mom is a wicked painter and she picked it up extremely fast and her artwork is absolutely amazing and a lot of people love it. A lot of people are in awe when they see her artwork, but I could start painting for like a month and my stuff would look terrible and it does look terrible. It's like a kid's drawing and I just can't pick it up naturally and that's for her. But to her, she's like, uh, it's not really a big deal. It's just something I do. And that's what your calling is. Like to you, it's not a big deal. You don't see the uniqueness. You don't see the specialness inside of it because you're just in the flow. You're just doing what feels natural to you. So it's easy to bypass your talents and overlook what you're truly good at because it comes from a flow state. And when you're not getting those results, say if it's my videos, for example, God has a plan for everything. These videos right now are going to be very motivational, very inspirational. If God brings me to an extraordinary level one day, and these are going to be very helpful to the people that are watching. What I am breathing into this microphone right now is just a part of my storyline. I'm not making no money from this. I'm not doing anything, but it's a part of my storyline and it feels natural and it feels good and it feels like the path that's for me. And now when it comes to your purpose, when it comes to your goal, there's going to be a lot of resistance and Satan is going to be in between that thing like a mother flipper. Like he is going to be battling you all the way when it comes to your purpose, especially when you dive deeper into it. And there's going to be a lot of doubts. There's going to be a lot of insecurity. There's going to be a lot of fear. There's going to be a lot of things involved in your process. And there's definitely going to be a lot of mental, spiritual warfare when it comes to what is designed, what is called for you. Because Satan, the devil, wants to strip that away from you. He just wants to see you miserable. And that's what it is. So when you tap into God's purpose for you, the crossover, when you're entering that stage, it's probably going to be a fight, first and foremost. And in your mind, you may have these expectations that you have to do. Exhibit A and Exhibit Z, you got to do all these things. You got to be a fool. You got to be more than yourself and you got to overextend and that's Satan trying to mess you up. Like let's say for example your purpose is painting and you just get into it. Be like oh you got to be Picasso. You're not making any money. Like there's no results. There's no this. There's no that. But God will mold you like some putty. It's going to take some time but you need to go through these development stages and it's not just going to be overnight. Like for me when it comes to this I can't just dive in head first. I got to go through some storms. God has to build me up. He has to make me a man who was able to take on what this comes with. It comes to your purpose, the expectation in a lot of people's minds. Like say if they want to do YouTube videos, they'll be comparing themselves to Mr. Beast and they'll try to become Mr. Beastified or they'll tap into somebody else's purpose or they'll distort their own clarity to become something else that's not really them and then they're on this dead end path that's not meant for them. When it comes to your purpose, there's a development process and God will mold you over time because we do have character defects, whether it's fear inside of our mind, insecurity, certain things we have to get over. God will strengthen us. He will mold us. He will make us into that person to take the next step, to take the next leap, to continue to progress. It's not going to be something that we dive in and we excel and we go all the way to the top because you will crumble and you will fall. It's not going to work that way. It's a step-by-step -step process. Like for me, I'm going to be open and I'm going to be honest. This is my gift. I love making videos. I love making music, but do I want to be famous in this world? Absolutely not. Who wants to be famous in a world with people who wake up and their main objective is to tear others down? Who wants to be a flashy object in this world where people don't have basic morals or basic principles from God? Like a lot of people are wicked. And for me, that has always been a struggle in my mind because I'm like, God, I know you want me to make these videos. I know you want me to help people out. I know you want me to speak the truth, but I don't want to be a puppet in this world. I don't want to be at the forefront of all this mess all this chaos that is going on in the world. But God's like, no, we need you the most because the world is like this. Because people are tearing another down. Because people are misled. Because people don't have that love, that natural affection inside of them. This is when the world needs you the most. And I'm like, okay, that really does make sense. I understand that. But there's going to have to be a process. Like, I do need the strength. I do need certain 
qualities inside of myself so I can be in this position to overcome this wickedness with good, to bring that hope, to bring that light. So when it comes to your purpose, when it comes to your calling, it may be uncomfortable, it may stretch you, it may put you in positions that you don't want to be in, and that's fine, but just go to God with it and ask Him to just unfold you naturally. You don't want to jump into anything and shock yourself, but a lot of the times when you are chipping away at your purpose, you're going to have to go through this uncomfortable stage where it does feel like you are being shocked. That's why my recent song was called Feel the Shock, because there is going to be times where it's going to be uncomfortable. You will be stretched out by God. It's because you got to go to that next level, and that's the place for you. But God will never give you more than you can handle, and if you fall down, just dust yourself off and pick yourself back up, but always lean on God, especially in this time, in this day and age. Like You don't want to be moving or operating in this world without God. It's going to be extremely hard to navigate and to maneuver or to be the person that you want to be in this world. And it's just because of the state of the world. Like This world would be so much better if it was laid out different. Like We have a crab in the bucket society where people want to tear another down because they're in their calling. They're doing what they naturally should be doing, what they were called from God to do. And the people who haven't seen their calling, haven't felt their calling, aren't on that path yet. They want to tear those people down. If you want to move and operate in a wicked way where you're constantly just tearing people down, being disrespectful, it's going to be a rugged, rough path. Trust me, I have been down that road. Like, if you don't have the favor of God, if you're moving with Satan and you have this dark energy where your main objective or your mission is to do people wrong, all of that energy is going to be thrown back at you and you will fall. Like, you see it all the time. Everybody who has ever crossed me or went against me or who has tried to do me wrong while well, I'm trying to just operate with my heart and I'm trying to just do my best. Every time somebody has came up against me, God has smacked them very hard. It's just not a way you want to maneuver in this life. Like if you want more stress, if you want more bad to happen in your life, just keep operating in that wicked way and it will come time and time and time again. But if you follow God and you overcome evil with good, your path will be a lot easier. When you have people around you who are tapping into their purpose, tapping into their calling and they feel purpose filled, they feel alive, they feel rejuvenated, they have life inside of their system, that's going to wear off on you. And the reason society is sick is because they have this crab in the bucket mentality. As soon as they see some light, as soon as they see somebody doing good, they tear it down to where there's no hope, there's no light, and then they complain, and then they argue some more, and they trap themselves and enslave themselves even further. But I understand it, that person's not doing good, and they see this person doing good, so they want to drag them down, but the reason this person isn't doing good is because they're constantly dragging people down. They're constantly in a negative mood. You really think God's going to look at that person and be like, yeah, I want to do something good for this person who's just constantly being a burden in other people's lives. I really want to bless this person who's just always dragging others down, who's just always trying to harm other individuals. I'm going to bless that person. I'm going to give them something in their life that's going to be meaningful. No, that's not how life works. You're just going to reap what you sow, the wheel that follows the ox. You're constantly just going to be in a life filled with more stress and more anguish and more pain and it's just going to be worse and worse and worse and worse and worse until you break down and you can't handle it anymore and then you turn to God and you're like, hmm, maybe I'll be nice to people. But anyways, everybody has gifts, everybody has talents and if everybody tapped into their talents, their purposes, this world would be beautiful. Like we would have so many amazing pieces of art, of tapestry, of posters. Like if everybody truly tapped into their calling, what they were designed to do, this world wouldn't be boring. We would have the cool coolest things to look at, the coolest things to buy, the coolest things to admire. Like the world would be beautiful if everybody tapped into their purpose, tapped into their calling. And you could just admire the world. But since so many people bury their calling, bury their purpose into the sand, we can't admire those certain gifts. And we only have things that are from people who idolize money. So it's done fast and it's just boring and it's just bland and there's no love. There's nothing special inside of it. When you're living in your purpose, you truly get something that is made with love, something that you can admire, something that lives on, something that is purposeful. And the man who idolizes money, just like, yeah, this is boring. This is awesome. This is going to live forever because it was made with love. And that's what you see nowadays. Like people don't want to do great work. They do it fast just to get a check. Nobody really takes pride in their work. They just want to speed to the check. And that's what happens when you idolize money, when it comes to your purpose, when it comes to your craft. Like if I was doing this for money, I'd just do simple, quick, clickbaity titles that would garner and grab attention and it would have no meaning. But because I don't idolize money, I idolize the calling that God has given me. My videos have subs.
substance and when I pass away, God forbid anytime soon, these videos will live on and they will inspire the next kid, the next person, and they actually have impact. And even though the devil may be battling you when it comes to your calling or your purpose, just push through, persevere, and go at God's speed. You may stumble, you may fall short, just take it one day at a time and write your story. Hey, they can't hold us down. I already battled the dark night. I can't even count on the tears, guys.